This video is all about your mindset and particularly the tools that you can use to build a better relationship with yourself, increase your self-confidence and really start to take action towards a life that lights you up. So just a quick reminder that this video is actually video four of my five part video series all about becoming the coolest person you know so that you can build a better relationship with yourself and more self-confidence to go after the things that you want in life. In video two, we spoke all about getting inspired to know exactly what you need to do to up level your life. And in video three, we spoke all about taking action to build momentum through overcoming the fear of judgment and knowing exactly what is gonna make you feel like the coolest person. But the reality is, that sometimes we still feel resistance no matter how clear we actually are on what we need to do. And that is usually a matter of your mindset. Honestly, it really doesn't matter how much we inspire or motivate ourselves or even how much we understand what actions that we desire to take to live a better life. When we've got mindset resistance, taking action and building momentum can often feel impossible. So here are five mindset habits or tools that you can use when you feel yourself self-sabotaging, making excuses, or just procrastinating on doing the things that you really truly want to do. Self-coaching is honestly exactly how it sounds, coaching yourself. Yes, working with a professional coach can be extremely powerful to help you gain like new skills and perspectives on your personal development journey. But the reality is that many people are not in a position to work with a coach financially. And also a coach isn't always going to be available right in the moments where you truly need it most. And this is where you can rely on your own intuition and skills to mentally work through the inner thoughts and fears that are stopping you from taking action. In video three, we spoke about how often our fears are hidden in our experience excuses and that when you find yourself in a moment of relief because you have an excuse as to why you can't do something, it's probably just your fear. And so in these moments is when we can really start working on coaching ourselves because that is the most potent moment as you can work through that fear when it's most prominent. One of the things that you can do to coach yourself in a moment of need is journaling. I know this is in every personal development video ever, but journaling really is a powerful tool to have a conversation with yourself. You can use methods such as deep why questioning, where you ask yourself, why am I stopping myself from showing up? What am I afraid of? What will happen if this fear actually comes to light? And when you've got it all laid out in front of you, you can look at it more objectively instead of experiencing so, it, so intensely and emotionally. And if you don't like writing or journaling is just not your thing, something else you can do is talk to yourself. Have a conversation with yourself, whether you do this in your mind or something I like to do is actually take the voice recording app out on my phone and have a literal conversation with myself, asking myself the same questions. Why am I so afraid of showing up in this way? What's the worst that can happen? If this thing, if all of my fears do come to fruition, am I gonna die? Like what's the worst case scenario and am I strong enough to handle it? It's really just taking a moment to be mindful and to dissolve the intensity of the emotions that are associated with the fears that are stopping you from taking action on the things that you wanna do. Your mind is full of programming and a lot of our programming actually sits within our subconscious mind and it's really hard to see when we are sabotaging because a lot of the actions that we take are actually on autopilot. So sometimes you might not even know that you are sabotaging yourself because let's face it, life is busy and often we just let our fear and ego run the show without consciously questioning why we're procrastinating on doing the things we actually want to do. Self-coaching is really powerful in the moment to work through when you can see yourself procrastinating. However, a long-term powerful approach is through reprogramming your mind. And there's a few tools that I use to do this. And the first one that I really love is mirror work. Now, mirror work is most powerful when you're actually looking at yourself in the mirror, doing it on a consistent basis and talking yourself through the things that you're actually experiencing. There's no point just sitting there saying, I'm a powerful goddess, if that's not resonating with you. Saying things like you're safe enough to go out and try that new hobby or I love you for being so courageous to actually start that business. Things that are really potent in your experience and using repetition to code them into your subconscious mind are a really powerful way to override or to slightly dissolve the fears that you have. 
Another thing that you can do is hypnosis. Now hypnosis has done, there's a lot of research on hypnosis and it's an incredibly, incredibly powerful tool that a lot of people use from athletes to artists and I really love hypnosis. Now two ways that you can do this, there are a lot of incredible hypnosises on the internet that you can use. I love Sapien Medicine, I'll leave them linked below. But another thing that you can do, get out that voice note app on your phone again and record some of the same affirmations that you use in your mirror work. And then you could just put some nice music behind it and listen to it as you're falling asleep at night. Because when you're falling asleep at night or when you first wake up in the morning is when our subconscious brain is most like a sponge. It's most absorbent of the information that we're putting into it. And so using hypnosis as you fall asleep at night helps to reprogram your brain. Another thing that you can do when you're having really strong emotional feelings towards procrastinating or you find yourself self-sabotaging or you're getting anxiety around taking the particular action you want to take is EFT tapping. EFT stands for emotional freedom technique. Honestly, for a long time, I thought this was a bit like out there, but it really is backed by science. It works with the meridian points in your body and helps to move the emotions through so you don't feel them so intensely. And then you can take action from a more neutralized place. Your health, particularly your hormones and your nervous system, plays a big role in your ability to feel self-confident. You might not even realize it, but our hormones play a huge role in how we actually feel about ourselves and our ability to think clearly. I'm by no means an expert in this field, but I recently got to spend some time with my boyfriend's mom, who's actually an expert in hormonal health. And she explained to me that when our hormones are out of whack, particularly our cortisol levels being higher than they should be, it impedes on our ability to think confidently. She explained that like when we're in a state of internal stress, our mind will do anything to stop us from even slightly stepping outside our comfort zone. Even that moment of slight resistance because the resistance is normal, especially when you're trying something new. But when you've got high cortisol levels, your body is essentially seeing it as danger and all it wants to do is protect you. So regulating our hormones and our nervous system essentially helps us to feel less overwhelmed and think more clearly. And some of the things that I've been doing lately since I had this experience to really regulate my hormones, first of all, is making sure that I'm doing regular exercise. Exercise is really good for your nervous system. It's really good to help regulate regulate your hormones, particularly light exercising like walking, stretching, yoga, all of those kinds of things. Walking is really, really, really good supplements as well. Now, this is something that you want to be careful with because you don't just want to start taking supplements willy-nilly. Go see a naturopath or your doctor or someone who's an expert in the field of hormones and find out particularly which hormones are going to be good for you and the hormonal issues that you may be experiencing. Another thing is obviously sleep. Getting enough sleep at night is really, really important to recover from the day, to allow your body to recover. Some Something that I've been doing is actually taking magnesium at night to help me have a really, really restful sleep. And another thing that you can do to help regulate your nervous system is breath work. I'm not a huge fan of like the breath work that you see on the internet, but what I've been doing is just throughout the day trying to take more mindful breaths, you know, whether that just be like putting my hand on my heart and my stomach, making sure I'm breathing deeply and just not living in such a state of panic or manic or rush and trying just to slow down a bit throughout my day and my breath is almost an anchor to do so. I need to tell you something. I freaking hate meditation. Honestly, I just find it so boring and I feel like for me, it's just not a vibe. Like even though I know how powerful it is and I know that it works because when I've done it, I feel good. Like the benefit of meditation is that it essentially trains you to get out of your head, to be the observer of your thought thoughts. It helps you to essentially control your mindset. This helps you to not always be so attached to the, to the particular thoughts that might be causing you to p- procrastinate. In theory, it's a good theory, but honestly, I just hate the practice. Instead, what I like to do is something called embodiment. It's not exactly the same, but it's helpful in training you to not attach to every tiny little thought that passes through your mind, as well as build better self-image and a connection to yourself. And when you have a better connection to yourself, you respect yourself more, which helps to build self-confidence. And some of the things that I really love doing for embodiment are dancing. This is my favorite. I love it. It's such a good way to just sink into your delicious body and just 
feel yourself in a good way. It really helps me to take my mind off anything that's stressing me out in the moment. Obviously, another thing that you can do is exercise. This is maybe where you can even increase the intensity of your exercise. I love Muay Thai. I think it's such a beautiful practice for not only, it almost feels like meditation, to be honest, because you're so hyper-focused, but also it just really helps you to feel things in your body. Another thing that you can do, which is also good for nervous system regulation, is present walking. Like just walking through the streets, being really present in the moment. Walking is just such an incredible tool, but rather than being on the phone, listening to music, whatever, just walking and just being present with your feet and the steps that they're taking, being super mindful about the experience you're having, but also like doing hobbies. And I know the whole point of all of these mindset shifts is that you can start doing more hobbies, but even if you do them privately, like such a beautiful embodiment practice for me is my DJing. I don't have to worry about people judging me or anything. I'm in the safety of my own home. So anything, whether it be stretching, cooking, DJing, drawing, painting, any of these kind of mindfulness, embodiment kind of practices where you're actually using your body are absolutely excellent alternatives to meditation. This concept might be one that you haven't actually heard before, but honestly, it's one of the most powerful and relatively simple yet effective mindset habits that I've picked up personally to help myself set myself up for success when trying new things that help me become the coolest person I know. And by the way, set and setting is actually a tactic used in the study of psychedelics to help control having a negative experience. You know, basically the more excited and comfortable your mind is going into that experience, the better the experience will actually be. So that's where I've taken this from. It's essentially curating your environment, your style, the people you're with, and your routine to suit the desired action that you want to take, setting yourself up for success, essentially. You know, for example, when I started skateboarding, I didn't go crazy, but you know, I did dress a little differently. I got myself some Vans, I got myself a Thrasher t-shirt and some skate-friendly jeans. I got a skateboard that I was absolutely obsessed with, and I chose the right people to start skateboarding with me. I chose people that I knew wouldn't They would teach me, but they wouldn't make me feel embarrassed. Or when I wanted to feel more excited to start DJing, especially in the beginning when I totally sucked, I set my office up where I would be practicing DJing to feel like a club. It essentially got me in the mood to actually sit down and practice. It got me excited. So I set myself up for success. You know, when I want to feel better about recording videos or showing up to create content, I make sure to just put that effort into dressing in a way that makes me feel like a confident badass. It makes me actually feel like I want to show up online. So all of these little tricks or hacks to kind of like get your brain to feel more comfortable doing the thing really do help. It's almost like the old saying, dress for the life you want, but really it's just about putting the effort into creating the right set and setting to better control the experience in advance to help you not feel like sabotaging in the moment. So my dear friend, that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments below which of these resonated with you the most and watch out for video five because it is going to be an extraordinary one all about implementing all of these ideas to change your life in three months. And I also just wanted to remind you that we do have a free Vibely group for this BTC pick challenge. So if you wanna come join us there, I will leave the link below. I really appreciate you watching this video. I'm gonna go clean my house now because all that B-roll made a mess. I love you, bye.